Praise the Lord. Children of God, praise the Lord. Let us be seated. We thank God for today. Today is a special day that most people are looking up to. And I'm here today to share some experience with you. Today is not to throw any blame on anyone. When the youth were trying to demonstrate what our fathers used to do, <laughs> I said, huh, these children. <laughs> I remember some of the things my father would say. I didn't send you to school to play soccer. If you fail, that's all. Even though we, play, we were on their team, myself and my twin brother were on the team in the elementary school. But when we got to high school, no more soccer. It was a commandment. Another thing, if you impregnate any girl, <laughs> that is all for you. The third one, if any time I catch you swimming in the river, yes, we have to deal with it. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. We give all the glory for this morning. We thank you, Lord God Almighty, for we are seated here, not mourning anyone, but we are rejoicing in thy presence. We give you all the glory for the Father's Day. Today, Father, as you want to speak to all of us, including myself that's going to speak, we pray the fathers will live here as a change heart in the name of Jesus. Amen. Those who are finding it difficult to apologize to their children, just like our pastor prayed, to apologize to their wives. Lord, as we all leave the sanctuary today, give us a change of heart. Amen. Those who cannot even appreciate their children for the little things they are able to do, either in their studies or at home, or doing household chores. When we leave this place, we're going to be a changed man in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you. At the end of today, Lord, let us give you glory. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Sometimes I look at myself and ask the question, am I a failed father? Especially when I see some things going on with some of my children. I ask that question. Sometimes when in the shower, for most of the time when I'm, I'm in the shower, I ask myself one question. Because we are, my mother had, is it nine or ten of us? And I ask the question, my father is no longer alive. How was my father able to do it? If I have less than 10 children, how was he able to do it? And this is a man who never went to school in his life. How was he able to do it? I remember a time when we came back from Ghana, people came to my father and said, how did you bring these, these girls and they are not pregnant? Then I knew that my father was a great man. Amen. Praise the Lord. Today we want to look at, pay the price. What are the price we have to pay as father? What price are you going to pay as a father? What price am I going to pay? We start from God. Who is God? We have so many definitions. We have so many definitions. But who is God? But I'll just give you a simple definition that the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14 and 15. I'll be reading from New King James Version. It says, For this reason I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's who God is. The Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. From whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. Just like we fathers. When we have children, they take our last name. Praise the Lord. 
That's a father. This is a father who can do what? Who can give you everything. We are named after him through the Lord Jesus Christ. And sometimes I, when I read, I, I read newspapers. I listen to news. And just last week, I read about a man who was going to jail because he killed his two-year-old son. Then I said, when he knew he was going to kill, why did he bring him to life? Praise the Lord. We that have our children in Nigeria, we didn't have the opportunity to see our wife delivering babies. And yet, God kept us. But I look at it and say, what of other countries where they are there when their wives are giving birth to children and they in turn abandon those children or kill them? It's sad. We're going to look at some statistics today. According to Pastor Adu, the father is God's instituted authority in the home. June 2nd. 2024, if you are here. <laughs> Brethren, I'm not there yet. <laughs> and I didn't sleep at 4 a.m. either. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. If I say I can imitate Pastor Adu, you know I'm joking, right? <laughs> a father is a man who takes responsibility for his household, loves his children. I want you to take note of that. Loves his children by providing for them, caring for them, teaching them to be law-abiding, teaching them the word of God, and teaching them to be responsible adults. That's what John Maxwell said. And we have to, let's look at the words. Look at those things. Look at those, those responsibilities that John Maxwell said here. Loving children, providing for them, caring for them, teaching them to be what? Law abiding. Teaching them the word of God, which is the ultimate and teaching them to be responsible in the society. If we neglect the role of fatherhood, the impact on society and children goes on sometimes in the most discouraging and hurtful ways because the enemies of the family are huge. Let me repeat that. If we neglect the role of fatherhood, the impact on society and children goes on sometimes in the most discouraging and hurtful ways because the enemies of the family are huge. And I want to say this. The children are observing our life as fathers, lagging our activities, and repeating our actions, whether good or bad. There was a time I heard Wally and Lara trying to imitate some of the things I used to say to them. They were saying it. I said, wow. I said, if I've been drinking or stealing, the same thing will happen. Praise the Lord. The imprint of that modeling is not always visible. But the result of a father's influence will show up in the child at some point in the future. The influence. Yeah, you might say, Oh, I didn't drink. Why is my child drinking? Let me tell you, time will come when it's going to come back to that children. I always say it. It's not, I, did, I was not drinking up because I'm a Christian. Even when I was not a Christian, when I was not a Christian. No, no smoking, no drinking. That was what I found my father do. That's a legacy there. We're going to come back. When you walk home from work. Fathers, listen to this. When you walk home from work and your children see you, ask yourself whether they are diminished or they are enhanced. 
I'm also asking myself, when you walk home from work, when your children see you, when your child sees you, are they diminished? Are they fearful or enhanced? I was grown, I was grown, I brought up in a way in a home where if my father travels out and come back, they, there's no difference because the, the discipline is still there with that woman, my mother. The so you can't even misbehave. Praise the Lord. Authentic men. Let's, let's see the next one by Charles Window. It says, authentic men aren't afraid to show affection, release their feelings, hug their children, cry when they are sad, admit it when they are wrong, and ask for help when they need it. When I was reading, when I, when I came across this, I'm like, do I apologize to my children when I misbehave to them? Do I apologize to my wife? Let me tell you one thing that happened one day. We were, we were preparing to come to church. And I'm a man that when I say we are living at 9.15, it's 9.15. No more, no less. So my wife was a little bit, you know. Then, then, then we were talking. And I said, shut up. Yes, I won't come here to lie. And then we came to church. So when we got home, I just opened my email. Lara and Wale were with us that time. And I saw their email. Dad, please, we know you love our mom, but please, we don't want you to ask her to shut up again. You know where I come from, shut up is not an insult, right? <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> and guess what? You can ask them. Maybe they have forgotten. I call my wife in their presence and I apologize to her. And I told my children, I will never say that to her again. And since that day, I've never said that to them. Amen. Let's see what God said about Abraham. Let's see what God said about Abraham in the book of Genesis. The book of Genesis, the first book of the Bible. Chapter 18. One thing I'm uh, amazed about the life of Abraham is who taught Abraham all these things? So if you are under the ministry of Pastor Adu, the ministry of Pastor Afolanya, the ministry of Pastor Oni, and under the ministry of Sunday School, and you are listening to the word day in and day out as a father, and you are still going towards leaving your children, not doing the, the right thing to do, then you have to ask yourself, are you really learning? No one is going to give you tests and say, oh, see, let's see if he has passed or he has failed. But guess what? Do you know how we know whether you are passed or failed? It's your wife. It's your children. When your wife goes to work, does she want to come home? Because you are there? When your children go to school, when they travel, are they happy to come back home? That's the test. We are paying the price there. God spoke about Abraham. Look at it. He said, verse 17 of, of chapter, uh, Genesis chapter 18. He says, And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham what I am doing? Since Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. Verse 19. For I have known him in order that he may command his children and his household after him that they keep the way of the Lord to do righteousness and justice that the Lord may bring to Abraham what he has spoken to him. Where did Abraham read all this? Who taught Abraham? So if, if you cannot answer that question, to know who taught Abraham all this, and we are here, we're learning all these things, and we are not going to fail in Jesus as a father in Jesus' name. Amen. I want us to look at some of these items here. Spirituality. What price should you pay should you and I pay as father? 
What are the price? Spirituality. Teach the children the word of God. A good father chooses to spend time in God's word so he can abide in his presence. Let's look at Proverbs chapter 4, verses 1 to 4. Proverbs chapter 4. It says, Hear, my children, the instruction of a father, and give attention to to no understanding. For I give you good doctrine. Do not forsake my law. When I was my father's son, tender and the only one in the sight of my mother, he also taught me. That's where I'm going. He also did what? He also taught me and said to me, let your heart retain my words. Keep my commandment and do what? And leave. Fathers, it's our duty to teach our children the word of God. I knew how to recite our father through my father. He was a photographer whenever he's doing his work. He would call us, my seven, my twin brother. Our father who art in heaven will teach us. Because the one we have in school is a different, but at least he taught us the word of God. Two, pray for your children. Let's look at the book of Job. The book of Job, chapter 1, verse 1 to 4. Pray for your children. Do you have days that you pray for your children? Do you pray for them every day? He said, and his sons would go and feast in their houses, each on his appointed day, and would send and invite their three sisters to eat and drink with them. Let's go to Nethers. So it was when the days of feasting had run their curse that Job would send and sanctify them and he will rise early in the morning rise early in the morning and offer what burnt offerings according to the number of them all for job said it may be that my sons have sinned and cursed god in their heart thus job did regularly Amen. praise the lord let's Pray for our children. Prayer is a vital link between a man and God. It is a lifeline for maintaining an active relationship with Jesus Christ. So Job did that, was praying. Let's pray for our children. Yes, I remember the other time, Pastor was preaching, he said, fathers, mothers, leave your children. Once they are grown, they are married, leave them alone. But he didn't say, don't pray for them. Did he say that? No. Praise the Lord. Thank you very much, sir. Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 22, verses, 11 to, verses 8 to 11. First Chronicle, rather. First Chronicle chapter 22, verse... But the word of the Lord came to me, saying... You have shed much blood and have made great wars. You shall not be the house for my name because you have shed much blood on the earth in my sight. That's God talking to David. And David trying to relay what, uh, what God told him. Behold, a son shall be born to you who shall be a man of rest. And I will give him rest from all his enemies all around, which God did in the time of Solomon. He didn't fight any what, any war. His name shall be Solomon, for I will give peace and quietness to Israel in his days. And they enjoyed it. He shall be the house for my name, and he shall be my son. And I will be his father, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom over Israel forever. Let's go on. Now, my son, may the Lord be with you. Look at what David was saying now. Pray for him. And you may prosper and be the house of the Lord your God as he has said to you. Praise the Lord. It's very important to pray for our children. In any career they find themselves, even if your child said, I'm going to college to learn how to clap. Let me tell you, your prayer for him or her will go a long way to help, that, to help him succeed in the chosen career. Praise the Lord. If you ask me, one of my children here, I wanted that child to be a, a, a medical doctor. But later on, I discovered that, no, 
said, the sister told me, he said, no, he, he, said, he, said, he said, no, no. He said, that, that's not his area. All right, fine. But thank God, that child is fulfilled in the chosen career now. Amen. And that's the very important that we fathers should listen. Praise the Lord. Amen. If I had forced that particular child, maybe you will not be who he is today. Praise the Lord. Amen. Training, the third one is training and instruction. Training and instruction. Proverbs chapter 1 verse 8. Proverbs chapter 1. My son, hear the instruction of your father and do not forsake the law of your mother. Training. When you talk of training, training is not easy. It's not, no one wants to train as such. It's, you, everybody, if you ask our youth now, our chosen generation, what job do you want to do? I want a job that um, I won't do too much, but money will be coming in. But when you talk of training, you want to play, look at those who play soccer. I, one day I look at them, the way they train in Europe. I say, can I, if I have gone to soccer, will I be able to do all these things? Even when it is cold, they are still playing there. Once it is cold in my house a little bit, I'll, if my wife says, no, it's not cold, I'll just go and get the heater. And you can imagine me trying to, what, to train under that weather. I can't do it. Praise the Lord. I can't do it. Let's go on. We'll do, we'll do. The next one is caring. Care for the children. Care for the children. Let's, I want us to compare two passages here. First Kings chapter 4, verse 18. First Kings chapter 4, verse 18. Is that so? Okay. Simei, the son of Eli, in Benjamin. See? Can we? No, let's, let's keep on. Move on to verse 19. Okay, let me. Pray. Okay, let's go to Matthew first. Matthew chapter 17, verse 14 and to 17. Matthew. And when they had come to the multitude, a man came to him kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is an epileptic and suffers severely, for he often fire, falls into the fire and often into the water. So I brought him to your disciples, but they could not cure him. Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him here to me. Let's stop here. What I wanted to quote in the, in, in the book of Kings was that woman, Shunammite woman, whose the, uh, son uh, was sick. The son was with the father, and he said, my father, my head, my head. What did the father say? He said, take him to the mother. But here in the book of Matthew, this was another father whose son was sick, and then he brought him to Jesus. You know, we are, we are under, we are under caring. Now the question, look at these two men, one from the Old Testament. The child said, my head, my head. The child is with the father. Can't the father take him? Why do you have to send him? How many fathers do that? When your child is sick, you call the mother. Even if the mother is at work, come and take your child who is sick. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It is true. We, we see it a lot. I, I've seen so many of that. You know, my, my job has made me to see different types of fathers. Praise the Lord. So, and there's one man who came kneeling down and said, please, my son, my, my child, my child, heal him. And that's my prayer for everyone today. Even if you didn't do it yesterday, you can start now. Amen. You have the opportunity. Amen. It is not enough to pay your children's school fees, buy them dresses or clothes, taking them to vacation. But do you know about their mental state, emotions, do you care enough to take them to the clinic when they are facing health issues as a father? 
Or you just push them to their mother like it is found in this book. It's a challenge. Some men will say, no, I cannot hold small children. <laughs> and when they, are, when they are old and they start working, you see cannot take them to school. You see don't go attend their PTA as a meetings. You see don't go for parent conference. And then when they were young, you said what? When they were small, you said, oh, they are little. They, they, they will break in my hand. When it came to the time when they will not break in your hand, what are you doing for them? Let's care for our children. May they not help us in Jesus' name. Their mental state, their emotional state is very important. Very, very important. Five, spend time with your family, not with my family. Fathers, let's spend time with our family, our children. Charles Swindoll said, he said, on Wednesdays, on Wednesdays, no phone call in my home. That is the day for me and my family. That's the day we sit down and we eat together, we play together, and do everything together. So they don't, he doesn't receive any phone call on Wednesdays. And he's a man of God. Spend time. Sorry, if I look, this, it, it doesn't, don't, don't put what I'm not saying. Please don't put it, okay? Praise the Lord. Spend time with your children. Your children want more of your time and not money. Some of you say, yeah, 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 yeah. They want money too. Yes, they want it, but they want your time. A good father chooses to spend time in God's word so he can abide in his presence. The next one, don't be a dictatorial parent in the home. You dictate everything. This is what I want and must be done that way. If it's not done that way, it's finished. It's over. No? No? Praise the Lord. Yes. There should be some time of what? Agreement. You calm down. You stoop, you, uh, sometimes you have to stoop low a little bit in order to accommodate them. That's when you're going to hear more of them. That's when you're going to see more of them. Praise the Lord. Play with your children. Play with them. Fathers, don't leave them to the mothers alone. Play with them. Praise the Lord. When, when my, my, which, which of them, one of my children, he passed one exam. I said, come, come, let me tell you. I back here. Bam. And it's like, ah. People, were, they took their picture. I said, yes. I'm proud of her. Yeah, fathers, let's be there. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. The next one, be present and attentive to them. In the book that men are reading, The Measure of a Man by, by uh, Geza, Gene Gess, that man, man of God, will write a sermon and will call his eight-year-old daughter and you say, listen to me, let me read what I'm going to present tomorrow, what I'm going to preach tomorrow, what I'm going to preach, ne preach next week. And the eight-year-old started crying. And the man said, have I hurt you? Have I done this? He said, no, you have not done that, that. He said, but guess what? Anytime I'm talking to you, you don't listen to me. It's in the book. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Dickin Dele Odujole just wrote a book recently. He said, show your children that you care about them and their spiritual lives. Listen to their questions, their doubt, and experience. Share your stories, your insight, and testimonies with them. Yes, tell them stories. I like telling stories. And I like listening to stories. Tell them story of your life. Even when, where you have failed before, let them know. So that they will not do the same thing. Praise the Lord. I'm not the father who will say, even though I had grade one in, I, tell, I told them, I said, even though I had grade one in my days, those who were who are that, uh, guess what? When I was in form three, 
Second, I told her when I was in form three, I failed woefully. Out of 14 subjects, I passed six. I failed. So, you see, I won't tell them, oh, I was this from form one. I was this. No, 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 no. I told them during the time I failed too. Praise the Lord. So let's tell them. When you tell them this, then they will believe in you. But if your child comes to you and says, Dad, did you ever fail before? Say, me? Failure. No, 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 no. Uh -uh. I've never failed before. <laughs> Dad, were you stubborn? Oh, I was very stubborn when I was growing up. After my father, after my brother, myself and my twin brother, we are the next one to him. You know, in the, if you say, we say you eat cane, in the, if, I, if I interpret it just like that, raw like that, that is cane. Yes, we are very stubborn, but we thank God. God deliver us. The last thing I want us to hear is leave a legacy behind and not inheritance. Inheritance is good, but it can be depleted. It can be wasted. Even sold out by your children. True or false? Yes. Your children can fight for one another, with one another, because of inheritance. They can go to court for a settlement. They can be torn apart forever because of inheritance. But the legacy will remain with your children forever. Amen. A legacy is a good name which is better than gold or silver you will leave behind when you depart from this terrestrial habitat. Legacy can give you, and especially your children, favor Anywhere you or your children turn to within and outside your community, state, or country for help. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Before we pray, I want to play, uh, want to play a very short video clip for all fathers here to see. And even mothers too. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Shall we, shall we let's, let's see, let's see that short clip. It's about three to four minutes. Men, if you have the blessing and opportunity to raise a child, take hold. Do not fold. Do not run. For you can be everything to a beautiful daughter, a beautiful son. You can be the holder of all answers. One, why, Daddy? Followed by a hundred more. And you will have patience and answers for a hundred more. And never bore, but soar with glowing pride. Proud of the thought evoked in this little mind, an endless unconditional love you thought you'd never find, you can be a father. You can be the crutch that never breaks, the friend that never flakes, the man who always waits, the best date, the living essence in someone's eyes of great. Consider a real chance at changing this world through a little boy or a little girl. And they will give you unmatched motivation and willful fury that will outbox and outmatch all the endless worry they bring. They bring so much. They bring joyful hearts when we watch them sleep. They bring painful hurt when we see them weep. They bring endless opportunity to model and teach. They bring us a calling to influence the one soul always in reach, a calling to leave a legacy. Now they say inheritance is what you leave for your kids, but a legacy is what you instill and leave in your kids. So to the dads already building their legacy, to the dads who forgive, who teach, who love, who model respect and compassion, the dads who live their words through their actions, to the dads who play dress up and tea party, who wrestle and race and always lose. The dads who choose daddy-daughter dances over friends and booze. The dads whose kids want nothing more but to walk in their shoes. To the dads who can handle a hairbrush and stop monsters right in their track. To the dads whose daughters rather talk to them and check their Snapchat. 
thank you. Thanks to you, D, for always believing in me and supporting me. Thank you to my Heavenly Father for teaching the ultimate love and sacrifice for us all to see. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Praise the Lord. So, in a nutshell, let's see here. I'll just try to give round of like this. Being a father, therefore, requires your time, personal commitment, perseverance, focus, planning, and team effort. We need that as fathers. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. We're going to end with this song. It's a, it's a common song that I like very much. It says, God give us a Christian home. If you look at the wordings, uh, sir, do you remember the tune? No. Thank you very much. So let's all stand up and sing this song, please. Especially I want, I want the fathers in the house. If you are a father, please don't sit down. Let's sing it together. I, I want our mommies to sit down and the fathers to stand. Today, I know today is your day, but let our mommies sit down and fathers stand up so that we sing this song. To, praise the Lord. Let's, let's share the birds. The birds. Praise the Lord. Okay, let's go on. Go. Give us grace and home. Homes where the Bible is not on top. Homes where the master's will is soft. Homes where beauty your love is wrought. God give us grace and hope. God give us grace and hope. Let's pay attention to the two. God give us grace and hope. This is for fathers. Homes where the Father is true and strong. Homes and are free from the Light or wrong, homes that are joyous with love and song. God give us grace and hope. God give us grace and hope. God give us grace and hope. As your way is best, homes where the Lord is an honored guest. Forgive us, grace and hope. God give us grace and hope. God give us grace and hope. Homes where the children are. So, homes where the hearts are fast burned when glow, God give us grace and hope. God give us grace and hope. Father, we thank you. We give all the glory once again for this morning. We thank you for the word that came out to us. We pray, Almighty God, as we go and ruminate on these words that you have spoken to us throughout starting now to next year when we're going to come back and celebrate we will have people to testify about your goodness in their life in the name of Jesus if there are some anyone who is facing any turbulence as a result of troubled child as a result of father not doing their role playing their role very well Lord we pray now that you will heal such home in the name of Jesus Thank you, God Almighty. We give you all the glory, Lord. In Jesus' blessed name, I pray. Amen.